Hi everyone, welcome back again to the channel and to a new video. Today we are going to talk about the Secure Shell or SSH. I'm going to show you how you can use it, how you can create your ID, your key, and how you can transfer the key to another server if you want to work with the server using SSH. So without further ado, let's jump into the terminal. Hey guys, welcome back again to the channel and to another video. So again, here we are on the desktop of Arch Linux. Now, what I'm going to show you in this video is how you can actually manage SSH and transferring files from your local machine uh, to a server and vice versa. Now, this implies creating also your SSH credentials and transferring them to the server and so on. So if you're working with a remote server, for example, like in my case, I'm using now, as you know, Lino, that's my remote server where uh, my website is hosted. Uh, let's say if I want to transfer some files in there, I can do so directly from my terminal via SSH. So I'm just going to show you here how you can do this. And if you are in the same situation or you have a server that you would like to use SSH with, you can use the same procedure because this does not matter actually from the distribution. So to show you first what I'm talking about, let me pull up here one terminal and I'll go full screen here and increase the font size. Now, as you know, my web uh, website domain is eflinux.com. So if we want to access that via SSH, what we need to do first, we need to type in SSH and then I'm going to specify the root user because on that server, there is no other user available yet. So I'm going to type in, in here root and then add and then specify the address. Now here you can put in the IP if you have an IP or the name of the domain or the name of the server if you have a resolver uh, installed there. So in my case, it's EF linux.com because it's uh, the domain I have and then I hit enter and because it's the first time I'm doing this here I'm asked whether I want to connect using the fingerprint so I'm going to type in yes here and now I need to type in the password for the root user on the server. Now, when I actually created my server there on Linode, I could specify the password for the root user. So this is assuming that you have the root password already uh, available. So I'm just going to type that in. And as you can see, I am now logged in into the server. How do I know this? Well, look at the login prompt. It says root at EF Linux. And if I type in, in here, you name dash R, you can see the Linux kernel on my server is 419, which is an old kernel, but it's a very stable kernel. Now, the first thing what I want to do, I don't want to mess up here with the root user on my server. So I'm going to create an extra user just for this demo. So you'll see also how it's done. Now, usually when I would do this on Arch, I would create a user using also the wheel group as a supplementary group for the pseudo privileges. On this machine here, on this server, because it's a Debian machine, it's going to be a little different. So look what happened if I type it in here, vice sudo. And you can see we have already one group here which has sudo privileges, which is the sudo group. So what I need to do here, I need to create, if I want to do that, of course, I'm not forced to do that. But if I want to create a user on my server which has sudo privileges, this is the group I would use. So let me get out of nano here. So I want to create now a new user on my server. And to do this, I'm going to type in user add and then dash M capital G. So the M stands for a home directory. So I want my user basically to have its own home directory and the capital G it's indicating the system that this user will have a supplementary group. Now the username I will create here is my name, it's Hermano. And automatically when you create a new user in Linux, it's going to create also automatically its own group with the same name. But the capital G will make sure that I can specify an extra group that the user belongs to. So the extra group that I want Hermano to belong to in this server is sudo. And then the username is my name. And then hit enter. So the user is created. Now I need to give a password to it. So to do this, I will type in pass wd. And then the username. If I can type, there you go. And create the new password and then retype it. 
there you go. So I created now a new user on my system and I created also the password for this user and this user is going to be basically also having pseudo privileges. Now let me get out of SSH here by typing in exit. As I said, I don't want to mess up with my root user and we are back on my local machine. Now let's see if we want to connect to my user what I just created on the server. So I'm going to type in SSH and then hermano this time and then eflinux.com or if you have an IP again you can use your IP and then hit enter. Notice that I don't need to put the fingerprint because I already connected on the server the first time and just need to enter the password for the user hermano on the server which is the password I gave before. And as you can see, I am now logged in as a user. Now, there is a thing here, and that is I am actually logged in into the normal shell. I'm not using bash. So if I want to do this, I need to type in bash. And now I'm using bash as my shell. Now, if I want to make it default, I can type in sudo because this user has sudo privileges. And then user mod, and then dash dash shell. And then I specify the shell path, which is slash bin slash bash and then hit enter. Now I need to enter my sudo password. And as you can see, I forgot to enter one parameter in the command. So let me pull this up. So it's sudo user mod dash dash shell slash bin bash. And then I have to specify the username. Otherwise it's not gonna work and hit enter. There you go. So the next time I'm gonna log in here with my user, it's gonna log in directly with bash. So let's clean up the terminal. Well, now we are in my home directory on the server for this user. So if I type in ls here, there is nothing because I don't have home directories. It's not supposed to be anywhere there. This is a server. I would have to install some packages for that, which I don't need. And if I want to, I can create my own directories. Now, this is done. So let me get out of this and go back to my local machine here. And as you can see, now I go back to the original shell because it's not yet by default so i need to type in one more time exit but i can prove you if i type in again ssh hermano at i need to type in my password and now i'm logging to bash so if i type in exit now i am already out now the next step is to generate your key for ssh to do this we can type in ssh dash keygen and then hit enter now, by default, it's going to create the key basically in this folder, what you see in parentheses, and that's fine. So I'm just going to hit enter here to accept the default. And I want to protect actually my key with a passphrase. And so I'm going to type in here my password and retype it. And there you go. My SSH key is now generated. So what I can do now. I can first clean up the terminal and now I want to copy this key to my server so that I don't have to type the password every time. So the first thing we need to do is to type in ssh-copy-id and then the name of the server or the IP. In my case, it's eflinux.com because I have already the name and then hit enter. And I need to enter once the password for the user on the server. And there you go, the key is now added. And let me clean up the terminal again. Now I wanna make sure that I don't have to type the password every time I log into my server. So to do this, I'm gonna type in ssh-add and then hit enter. I need to enter the passphrase for my key, which I created before. And now the key has been added. So if we log in now to my server again, let me pull up here my last two commands and hit enter. Of course, this is made for convenience in my case so that I don't have to type the password every time, but it's absolutely not a must. If you want to type the password, definitely do that. It's also more secure, probably also if you have other users in your environment. Okay, so this is the first step. So we connected to SSH to my server and here I would be able basically to work as I would on a normal machine. So let's get out of here. So I'm going to type in, in here exit and clean up the terminal. Now I'm going to create a file here in my home directory. You can see if I type in ls, this is my home directory with my directories. I'm going to create a file here. So I'm going to type in touch file one and hit enter just to make sure that it's there. There you go. So what we can do here, we could actually copy this file. Let's say if I need this file on my server and to do this, I could use SCP, which is, which stands for secure copy, but I'm going to use in this video SFTP, which is secure FTP. 
because it's a very cool utility and if you are used to FTP, this is a great way to transfer actually files between your server and the local machine. So let me clean up the terminal. And I'm going to type in now SFTP and then hermano at eflinux.com and hit enter. So you can see it says connected to eflinux.com and we have an SFTP prompt here. So uh, there are a couple of things to be aware where we are when we are working with SFTP. We could always type in help here to have some help about what we can do with SFTP. But the two things which I would recommend you definitely to explore, it's one is basically LPWD, which stands for Local Print Work Directory. So it's basically going to tell you in which directory we are on our local machine. And if we type in PWD and hit enter, it's gonna tell you in which directory we are on the remote machine. So just to be aware here, you can basically navigate through your server or your local machine. And these two commands are going to always show you, you know, what, where, we, where you are uh, in your system, whether it's on local machine or your um, uh, remote server. So again, what I want to do now, I want to basically put my file one file, which I created before, which is in my local uh, home directory here, which is already the one I am in. And I want to put it in my home directory. In my, on my server, which is also the directory where I'm in on the server. So to do this, I'm just going to use the put command, put file one, and very simply hit enter. And the file is now uploaded. So let's say that now I'm done. So I type in exit here and I'm going to connect again via SSH. And let's say after a few days, I need to work with this file. So I'm just going to log into my server and type in LS and my file is there ready to work. So I could type in here nano, for example, and then file one, and I could enter here something. I don't know, let's enter uh, hi <laughs> from a nano on the server. There you go. And then we can save this file and exit nano. And let me exit my SSH here again. Now I'm gonna type in again the SFTP command to go back into SFTP. And let me type in again LPWD. Again, this is my home directory and PWD, my remote directory. So I want to basically now pull down the file I have here. So to do this, we can type in get and then file one and hit enter. And there you go. Of course, the file will be now overwritten. So if you don't want to do that, make sure you have a backup of your file on your local machine first. So let me type in now exit to go back to my local machine here and type in ls, I see my file one there. So on this machine, I have Vim, I don't have Nano. So I'm gonna type in Vim and then file one. And you can see, hi from Nano on the server. So it's that easy. So this is a very quick overview on how you can um, manage SSH between your local machine and a server and how you can transfer files securely with SFTP. Now, there are other ways we could use also uh, the very secure FTP, or as I said before, we could use also SCP, the secure copy. I'm going to show them maybe in another video, but this is just to get you started with SSH and SFTP on the Linux operating system. Again, if you have questions about this video and about this topic, let me know in the comments below, guys. I will try to answer you as usual as soon as I can. So there you go. These are the basics for SSH. It's easy, it's simple, and it's very powerful. If you have any questions about it, let me know in the comments below. And I hope you liked the video, guys. If you did, please hit the thumbs up and subs to the channel if you haven't already. Subs always help me out. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by visiting the Patreon website or you can donate via PayPal through the website as well. Thank you so much for watching the video, guys, and I'll see you very soon in the next one.